So today, we are down the farm. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Back again. Back Open again. Hoping no booster juice. Yes. So, for anyone who remembers this car, this is the car I used for my Max Mini ECU wiring. I don't know, tutorial thing? Basically, we put a Max ECU in one of my loom kits on this first to test it. I think I it was think this. I think it's your little test kit that you first ever made. Yeah. Before you sent it off for... For, oh yeah, it was production. Yeah, that was it. So this was the car that I used for basically testing my wire and lumen ECUs. So I've now sold shed loads, so thanks everyone for that. Um, basically, last time this car was on the dyno, we had a few issues with charging. charging. All night it wasn't charging. It was, was getting like 12 and a half, 13 volts on a good day. Um, and it didn't really like that. No, it was good. Yeah, it was really, really bad. Basically, the alternator just wasn't working. So it's got a big old alternator on there now, getting a strong 14 volts, which is good. Um, we had booster shoes, didn't we? Lots of booster shoes. So it had, um, he, he's got a, an Evo. I'm the bonnet. Can we have a look? Is it locked? No. So basically, um, this is the old engine out of my red race car um, that was getting a bit tired, so I donated it to Jamie. Um, we sort of detuned it a little bit, and um, it's been all right, to be fair, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been absolutely mint. So the spec is, it's a fully forged bottom end. It's got pistons, rods, uh, ARP, main cap bolts. It's got... Um, King Racing, big end of mains, isn't it? Like Something that. like that. Uh, M12 stud and nut conversion. It's got a ported polished head with cat cams. Um, it's got cat cam valve springs. Um, solid timing belt tensioner rather than the shitty sprung one. Uh, it's got a HO inlet manifold with a set of side feed 440s? Yeah. 440cc Subaru injectors. Um, turbo is on a DA? DA performance. DEA performance uh, engineering adapter, adapter plate. plate. Yeah. So it's basically a bolt on adapter plate that bolts to the head, and then it's got Mitsubishi Evo Turbo and manifold bolted to that. So the, the Evo Turbo cost you like what? 180 quid, something like that? It was it? actually 100 pound delivered. 100 pound delivered, so there you go. It was cheaper a little while ago. Yeah, they used to be really cheap till this conversion came out, but yeah, that manifold and turbo cost like 100 quid, and we're hoping that it will do 300 horsepower. TD05, isn't it? Yeah. TDO 520G? Or well, don't you really know? Uh, no, it's, so, I think it's... Is it small? 10.5. Oh, oh, okay. Well, we, we don't really know. We're going to see. Um, so, yeah, that's the spec of the engine. Basically, got, uh, the engine is massively over spec for the size of the turbo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All he wants is 300 horsepower. Uh, it's got an MTX conversion with a Mark 1 Focus RS gearbox in there. It's got some proper drive shafts in it. Two and a half inch boost pipes. Massive intercooler, because the last intercooler, I seem to remember, was getting a bit warm, wasn't it? I uh, can't remember the, the ins and outs. I it wasn't too bad, I just didn't like the way it was rooted. Oh yeah, because there's boost pipes everywhere. Pipes all over so the this place. is like a really thick core intercooler with massive end tanks on it. Thanks um, to the old Zach at Zoo Speed for that. Oh, is it his old cooler? It's um, one he made for... Oh, Martin's. Holbert, yeah. Then sold it to John Williams, then sold it to me. Yeah, <laughs> so basically it's got a big old core, big old end tanks, loads of uh, air flowiness. So hopefully it'll keep things nice and cool. Uh, a nice big can and air filter. All the right bits, isn't it? Obviously a Max Mini ECU and Can Lamber module, so yeah. Let's get it strapped down, see what it does. Today's plan. Oh yeah, that was it. You said boosting issues, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. So because it's on an Evo Turbo, it's still internally gated. And the external wastegate, um, your sister bought for Christmas, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, so his sister messaged me and was like, do you know anything that Jamie might want for Christmas? I was like, yeah, he wants a wastegate. She's like, fucking what? So yeah, gave him a link to a wastegate, but the wastegate come with a very small spring, and we put a Mac valve on it and got the ECU to up the boost, but it wouldn't go past like, I think it was like 13, 14 PSI. You made that, I think it was on like 10 PSI. Yeah, like 10 PSI, so we didn't make loads and loads of power, but now you've put a 1.2 bar spring in it? Well, we tried a 1.2 bar spring, that got it to I think about 13, 14 PSI. Yeah. Then we again the Mac valve was kind of absolutely flat out. So then now I've put a one one point two? One point nine bar. I one point nine? Yeah, but it only makes a bar at the Oh moment. really? Yeah. Oh okay. So we've got a one point nine bar base spring in it and it makes one bar of Basically, positive boost bit, pressure. It's a bit rubbish, I'm not it's, Yeah, it's not great. It could do with externally gating, but we're we're trying to work with what we got here on a budget. So Where yeah. Is it? Yeah, so let's get it strapped down. I'm gonna zero the boost tables. We'll do a power run and see where we stand. Let's crack on. So we're in the cell. Jamie's got his ear defenders on. I'm surprised they fit. On. <laughs> <laughs> see, that wasn't me taking the piss out of your ears, that was you. 
Jamie's got two pairs of ear defenders on. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> uh, got it all strapped down, back straps, got wheel chocks, handbrakes on, Lambo probing his lovely side exit exhaust there. It's all tied in, it's not just rattling, although it will rattle, but fuck. Um, he's got the side straps on, he's got like a nice metal brace across the front of his car, so it's, I can just put my little ratchet straps onto the brace to stop it going side to side. Got the cooling fan, yeah. Not much left to do other than run it up. Let's put the fans on and see what happens. So, I said to Jamie, when you fit your breather, make sure the fitting on the bottom of the breather tank goes to the fitting on the front of the block, so any oil in the tank will trickle back down. Yeah, oh. Oops! Oops! <laughs> Oops! My dino's covered in oil! It's not a clean it, you <laughs> He did clean this. Look at the oil coming out. Is there a drain on the bottom of it? Oh, you're literally just going to drain it. Old Zachariah hooked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Top work, zoo speed. Right. Wait, where's my torch? Let's have a look. Always dripping. Come on, then let's have a. See, you know what? I don't know if I'll be able to see this. But... That's water as well, mate. Yeah, that's a bit of everything, I think. Mmm. Yes, a nice bit of a. It's more condensation. Oh, it is a lot of oil now. Condensation oil. To be fair, the catch can did, did do its job. job. Caught it till it got full. Um, I just need a massive overflow <laughs> that I might have to I need know, a, put, put in the boot. You need a catch can for your catch can. <laughs> <laughs> your dog, he like catch um, cans. Okay. So we got a catch can for your catch can. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> milkshake. Damn. I'm not gonna lie, mate, but that milkshake ain't gonna bring no boys to the yard. No, I don't think it is, mate. Oh, she's not breathing. To be fair, that's probably just condensation that's boffed in there. I it's always it's... breathed a bit heavy, that engine. Especially when it started coming near the end of its life and I donated it to you. Yeah. Oh, well. Hey, it does 300 brake. Should do. Yeah. Just to... At least the inner arch acts as a good funnel as well. <laughs> she just does. boff it down into there. So I said pull forward, otherwise all that would have been in your dino. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Now it can go in the waste all burner. Right, let's crack on. So, Jamie's lovely little Fiesta now makes 302 horsepower and 329 foot pound of torque with a really nice curve. Nice big punchy bit of torque down the bottom because it's a road going turbo designed for like a similar sized engine, like a two litre engine. Um, so yeah, it makes me punch a torque down the bottom and then it falls off a bit. Horsepower, nice mate, just starts tailing off near the limiter. One thing we have noticed though, <laughs> what, I don't one, know, one small, one, minor, one small issue. minor issue that you might have seen me pointing at is, uh, if you just look down here at the top of the uh, log that the ECU's currently logged, Fuel duty primary, 120%. Basically, what that means is, flat out, the fuel injectors are not pulsing like fuel injectors. They're pretty much just staying open and injecting as much fuel as they can physically inject. <laughs> so, in an ideal world, 
if I was to do that then? No, it's not. Oh, no, it's, okay. it's not meant to do that, no. Oh. So in an ideal world, what I probably <laughs> should do is say to Jamie, let's turn the boost down a little bit and uh, get the injectors below 90, 95% duration tops. But unfortunately... You ain't doing that. This <laughs> One, he said I'm not doing it, and <laughs> it's making this power and this boost pressure on the new actuator spring. Yeah. So there's no boost control at all. So I can't actually turn the boost down any lower without changing the spring in a wastegate. Yeah, he ain't doing that either. And he ain't doing that either. <laughs> I don't know where the old one is. Let's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. I've been able to launch it into the bin. <laughs> Let's have a look at the boost. And, hang on, nope, not that one. So if we put boost, gauge pressure, and then lambda. So, as you can see, this is boost. So we've got 17 PSI along this line. So 18, 19. So it's making about 18, 19 PSI. Holds it well, considering as well. It holds it pretty flat boost pressure all the way to the limiter. And my AFR, this is 0.8 lambda. It's a bit rich when it comes on. And then as you can see, the injectors are pretty flat out about here. And higher in the rev range, it just starts creeping to 0.81 lambda. At that boost, and with this type of engine, because it's all forged and stuff, that fueling is absolutely fine. It's not fine that the injectors are flat out and open. Anyone else's car wouldn't advise this, but if this goes wrong, he knows it's on his head. Yeah. So yeah, and to be fair, that is 0.81 Lamba at the tailpipe as well. So that's probably just under 0.8 coming off the back of the turbo. So that's absolutely fine. I would ideally, in an ideal world, want a bit more fuel into it, but the big old intercooler's working well. Charge temps didn't go above 36. Considering in this cell at the minute, it's 21, 22 degrees. So I'm quite happy with that. Are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. So um, what next is we're gonna convert the uh, inlet manifold to end feed injectors, fit some proper sized injectors. I think I've got some 800 cc's at work. And then try again? Yeah, chuck them in. I'm sure Ginger's got some 800 cc side feeds that he's not using. Maybe we could use those. Mm. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right, until next time, that'll do. Hope you like this little snippet of a video. Cheers, guys. Bye. Say bye. So long. <laughs>